So here we have the voltage monitor from Bender. It's the VMD421H-D-3. Uh, dash dash you see here a five years warranty on the unit. The unit is uh, well packed. When you purchase this in, uh, uh, in Germany, you get the handbook in, in the German language. You also see that here is the manual in the English language. Um, some some warning, packing, and then inside we have the voltage monitor. It looks uh, very well well built. On the side we have the schematic, which is always very handy. There's the front view of the unit and the side view of the unit. Initially, um, of course, appears very high, so it wouldn't fit your standard board, but any uh, control board or control uh, enclosure, it would happily fit in. Uh, Bender have done a very good job in this manual. They've given a very good overview, uh, nice uh, index, and also the, the unit has uh, what you would say um, some default settings. So if you have a typical setup, there's not a lot of uh, settings that you need to adjust. Each uh, setting and parameter is nicely explained. To include uh, some diagrams, uh, time diagrams. Probably the most in, um, important of all is, is this page here with the mounting and the protection device shown and then this operation and, and setting uh, table which uh, goes through all the possibilities with the device. The page I, I found very handy, uh, menu structure and here you see the different parameters and how you can change those parameters on the device to include including a password on the system so I'll just show you the the voltage monitor now in position so here we are with the voltage monitor from Bender in a board uh, with a temporary connection, a three phase connection, with a three phase breaker, and on the outgoing, the two auxiliary contacts, uh, we just have a, a multi, a clamp meter on the ohm range. Not really needed as we have indicator lights in here telling us the status of the alarm contacts. So here we have the voltage monitor. Uh, temporarily set up in a board. Um, the normal display is like this. The light is on. It's a healthy condition with regards to the parameter set. You can go up and down, scroll up and down the menu with these two buttons here, up and down. Uh, this is the enter or go into the menu button and this one plays as a, a test button if you hold it for a second and a half and this one is a reset again for one and a half seconds. Using these two arrows we can go scroll through the menu. Here you can see that you, you see the voltage from L2 now to neutral, L3 to neutral. You can check the asymm asymmetrical value real time. You can look at the Hertz real time. You can see the phase rotation, and we come back to L1 to neutral. It's flashing because any of these values you can make a default by just pressing enter. So if we went to L2 and we want to set that as a default um, display value, we just press enter, and now that's the display default value, or not value setting. If you want to come into a menu, <laughs> You press for a second and a half, and we come into the 
the structure of the menu. We have basically seven items under this menu. Alarm, we have the out, we have the time settings, we have the settings, we have the information with regards to the uh, software install of them, and the history menu. We come to the seventh, which is the escape, and, and takes us back to the to the beginning. So if we just go back into the menu again, alarms, we say yes, we want to go into alarms. Here we are under the alarm menu with the under voltage set at 205 volts, the over voltage at 253 volts, the hysteresis being 5% of the U value, and asymmetric value 30%, under frequency 49.5, over frequency 50.5, and the hysteresis 0.2 of a hertz. And we have the phase rotation. And we have the escape menu. So we're still on the alarm. So perhaps we want to make a setting in the alarm. Um, and we want to change the setting there. Say we want to change the under voltage value. So we press. I've put a password on here already. It's just two. So now the flashing. Um, What's flashing in the display? This is the value you can now change um, by using the up and down arrow. So I want to leave it on. Now the voltage value we can change. We could take it up, we could take it back down, and we can set. Now we're out of that, and then we can walk along to the next value, which is over voltage. I don't want to change it. We have the uh, hysteresis value, asymmetric value, the frequency value under frequency value over and the hysteresis setting and the, the phase rotation. We want to change it here. We can have it on. We can turn it off. We want it on. And we can change the value. Left anti-clockwise, right clockwise. We want to leave it like that. We want to get out of this menu. to change that so we have to go in there we want that back on and we want right and it's good and now we have the escape button and we're out of the the range of the menu underneath the alarms now we can go out and here we see that the M is flashing so the memory is off in our case And that's how we want it to be, is off. It could be continuous if we want, or it could be on, but we want off. So that's good. We could also change the normally closed or normally clo um, normally to a normally open contact if we want. So this is also interesting, we can actually change that. And we're talking about the, the K1 here at the moment. I don't want to change it. Um, I do want to change it on here now, so I will change the relay two to a normally uh, a normally closed contact. So I will change that there, and you hear the click. And here we can change the LED where we want the LEDs. Um, to be on or off, how we want them to be signaled. And we also have the relay, which we can also go into and, and decide if there's an error on that circuit, if we want to activate the contact or not. And I've got it on. We then also can delegate or assign um, this contact now, relay one, where we get a signal with under voltage, which I've got on. I don't want to change. 
over voltage, also a symmetric problem, also is on hertz, under is on over frequency is also on and phase rotation is also on. Here also the S point AL alarm is also on and this means that when the voltage comes back that we can then program a time as to when uh, the relays will become active again. So I want that on and there we have our escape and we would do the same with the R1 if we wanted to uh, R2, sorry So we're just looking at the R2 and we just check that um, that we have basically the same on the R2 as the R1. So we go into it, the error uh, signal area is on, the under voltage is on, the over voltage is on, the asymmetric is on, the frequency under frequency is on, the over frequency is on, the phase rotation is on and the S point AL is also on. And then we have our escape, and we escape from the menu above, and that was our outs. Here's our times. So now we're in the time menu, we see T on. So, and this was for contact or K1. We have a programmed of one second here at the moment for T on, so when anything happens there's one second delay before anything happens. For relay 2 is one second also. Then we have a T time, this is the, um, the delay return time. So when the voltage comes back and it's within parameter then there's 10 seconds before the relay contacts change. And then we have the T off time, which are taking the default time of 0.5 seconds. So it's a delay release time of the combined contacts together. And here we go out the menu again. We go down from the T time to the set time set. So we can change the um, the way the voltage is monitored by free N or just free phase. So we want 3N. We can have the password. The little padlock is flashing. We can have the password on or off. We've got it on at the moment. And here's the number for it. I want to keep it the same. We have the opportunity of going back to factory default settings. Don't want to do that. So we'll go to the next menu. There's also the preset settings. And we don't want to do that either now. So it's flashing on system and system seems to be blocked at the moment. If you look in the in the manual, it says function blocked. So I think this can be used at the moment. And then we can escape. That is our set menu. We go into the I and F, which basically then tells us in a scrolling sort of way the version of the hardware software on the device. Or after the scroll has happened, you can walk through it yourself. Then the last thing is is HIS history. You can enter the history and you can see the last problems that you had. And we can clear it if we want. So now so now we just have the no alarms in there, just the escape and clear button. And that's it. Now we start at the top of the tree again with the alarm menu. That's as simple as that. If you want to go to the top, press for a minute, a second and a half, and we're back to the top. 
So now we just want to do a function test. This is only one to uh, see there's no um, voltage phase has been lost. My clamp meter that you saw earlier is on the left hand side here. I will put it on the audio um, setting now so you can hear the status of the contact and we can see what happens after we lose voltage. So we programmed a one second delay. So actually if we turn off and back on within a second we see we didn't get any alarm off and back on again. Now we stay off more than one second and there's the alarm. Contacts that we want are the open ones. Our voltage has been lost. Our voltage comes back. We get an immediate reading as to what is there. And we programmed a 10 second delay on the alarm contacts. And there we are. Voltage uh, is back. The 10 second time delay has run out and our auxiliary contact has closed. So that was a, a quick review of the Bender voltage monitor, the VMD41H. Uh, by no means um, I take responsibility for any of the settings or any of the anything said basically, but it just gives a quick overview of this voltage and frequency monitor for under voltage, over voltage, under frequency and over frequency monitoring. A good unit, a well built unit and well worth purchasing.